farther forward as we kick off game number one of this best of three. It's gonna be Qian Pao and Talon Flame for Z and the double genies for Henry. Double genies. Not maybe the genies we expected from back in the day in the, in the <laughs> X and Y era, maybe Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, but two very strong Pokemon in their own right. However, I really favor this lead for Z because the Sword of Ruin in conjunction with the Gale Wings Brave Bird from Talon Flame is a really big threat here. That Landros on Henry's side is Choice Scarf. It does not have Protect, so a Life Orb Brave Bird, especially with the Sword of Ruin, might actually just one-hit KO it before it can even move, thanks to that priority from the Gale Wings. And you can't protect it either, so if you want it to survive this turn, you might just have to swap it out. Yeah, I, I mean, this is going to be super tough to have to try to get through, but you also need to consider that, like, you are packing the Tailwind at the very least, so does he feel comfortable trying to even just go for, uh, I don't know, Maybe this Icicle Crash may not looking like such a great idea, <laughs> but you are going to have the Dark Terra on this Tornadus just to help give it a little bit of oomph. And you also have the Tailwind on the other side, actually. So Ooh. this Terra is actually fantastic yeah. because it is going to be able to block out this Icicle Crash from getting that full KO. And you also don't get the flinch. So Henry able to come out with a big KO on this Talon Flame. And a speed drop on Shen Pao to boot. A really nice turn for Henry because you know, the, the Tailwind coming out immediately for, immediately for Z means that maybe you might think Henry might be at a disadvantage, but Z not taking the opportunity to go for some damage of their own isn't able to keep that Talon Flame around to threaten with those very strong Brave Birds. Now that Tornadus did Terrastalize, you obviously don't have that at your disposal anymore, but you were able to survive that Icicle Crash very importantly, and now you can go for a Tailwind on this turn and ensure that you're kind of staggering, staggering your own Tailwinds uh, and making sure that your Tailwind lasts later, especially because you do have that Covert Cloak, which means the Iron Hands on Z side cannot flinch you with Fake Out. But then you have to worry about whether or not your Landorus is actually going to be able to survive the turn either, because it looks like a very easy Fake Out into that Landorus slot, and Icicle Crash to follow it up and get the knockout. True. Yeah, the Blink Wind Storm there, it was a really big deal too because you know, if the Tailwinds are matched, the Chen Pao should be outsped by that Tornadus. It looks like one more Blink Wind Storm will be able to knock it out. Well, here's the Landers leaving the field. Rillaboom now coming in to take its place. Still going to be susceptible to something like the Iron Icicle Crash on the other side, but I think it's just a much less important piece when you take a look at what Z actually has on their team. But the Tailwind now will give you that one extra turn once these uh, does expire. And the Rillaboom, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a one-hit knockout. Yeah, not the greatest uh, of fates if you're that Rillaboom there, but I really don't mind that at all if you're Henry. The Rillaboom against the Iron Hands and the Chen Pao, not going to be doing a whole lot of work, especially considering that Maridon is probably in the back for Z and will still be able to resist those Grass-type moves. But now you get your own Tailwind up, you get to bring in your Kyogre. Again, thanks to that Bleak Wind Storm speed drop, that Shan Pao might even be outsped by this Kyogre as well, depending on how it is trained. But on a team like this, you're, you're indexing a lot into offense and speed. I wouldn't be too surprised to see that be a pretty speedy Kyogre. And this is where what you were saying about the Iron Hands comes into play. It doesn't have an Electric-type attack. True. So how is it going to be easy to actually take out this Kyogre on Henry's side? It that's might not be. <laughs> yeah, like, I think that's why you're so okay if you're Henry, having already committed the Terrestrialization. Because otherwise, this Kyogre could turn into a Ghost-type, which is nice, but, you know, the Chien Pao is packing that Sucker Punch. This yep. time, though, Z is ready to go for the Terra. Shanpa might have Sucker Punch, but the Iron Hands is the focus right at the start of this turn. It goes for that Grass Terrestrialization. Even though it doesn't have an Electric-type move, will allow it to stick around and fire off multiple attacks into that Kyogre. Yeah, it's still going to be taking neutral damage from any of those Fighting-type attacks. And this is going to help keep this Iron Hands just a little bit safer as well as this full power Water Spout Oof. comes through. And take a look at that. I mean, that's... Grass Terra plus the natural bulk of the Iron Hands oh and the Assault Fest. And what a huge chunk out of this Kyogre. That's a really important bit of damage there. The close combat Iron Hands in conjunction with the Sword of Ruin from the Chien Pao, I really don't think is a damage cup that people have in their heads. That's obviously something Z knows because they're very comfortable going for that play. And the, the grass crystallization there means that you're able to survive Clearly one more water spot, especially after that big damage. But I really love that play because you're getting so much damage into Kyogre, and now you really don't care about the speeds anymore because you know that Sucker Punch will always be able to KO it. You put yourself in a spot where Kyogre can't water spout anymore, obviously. For that would sure. be a very sad water spout. <laughs> um, but Landorus now also, that's a great terrestrialization coming into the Landorus because the ground type attacks will not be resisted as well. Absolutely. And now, I mean, you do now have to deal with like Sludge Bomb which is why we're actually going to see the Sucker Punch into the Landers, calling that there's going to be a Protect on this Kyogre, which there is not. 
So the Sandseer Storm is plenty to be able to pick up this Chen Pao, and the Kyogre still gets a chance to actually follow up with the Ice Beam, which is now super effective in his oh. Iron Hands, but the Assault Vest keeping it around to go for the Heavy Slam to finish the deal on this Landorus. I thought that Ice Beam might KO after that close combat special defense drop, but Iron Hands barely hangs on, gets that crucial Heavy Slam off, and now the Kyogre and Iron Hands are staring each other down. Both very weak, both knocked out by one further attack. And it has, it's going to come down to what this last Pokemon is for Z. Obviously, we know the Tornadus is here for Henry, but if it's like Maridon, it it's got to be, right? And now that it can't Terrastalize, it's going to be able to resist that Water-type damage. Obviously, you have to worry about the Ice Beams, but you also can't like leave that Iron Hands alone, right? you got to go for something like a Bleak Wind Storm, probably an Ice Beam into that slot to try and KO it. And if the Maridon survives, one Discharge should just end the game. Yeah, but doesn't Henry still have one more turn of Tailwind? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Henry has a speed advantage for now, for sure. It's going to come down to whether or not this Ice Beam KOs. Well, let's find out, shall we? The Bleak Wind Storm, 100% accurate in the rain. So this Iron Hands is going to be able to get knocked out to that, but it's about whether or not this Maridon can actually survive this turn and maybe be able to dish out a Discharge to get the double knockout with the Ice Beam and the oh. Maridon. It's just not nearly enough. So the Discharge into both targets is the double KO, and Z takes game number one. Really well played game by Zwend and, and Henry's tornado is connected to Bleak Wind Storm. And then Henry has his own priority Tailwind, and you probably just can't use Talonflame at all for the rest of the match. But we have an Overquill on stream. We do. This is the first time I think we've seen an Overquill <laughs> on the VGC stream. Probably so any stream. Maybe I'm, TCG, but it's certainly not in Go. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe not. But yeah, amazing to be able to see this. And it's going to be the Kyogre next to an Overquill. So you get that Swift Swim activated. Uh, this is so much fun. Uh, the Talonflame there with the Tailwind, still kind of an issue there because the Overquill it does have Swift Swim, but that's the same speed boost as a Tailwind. So if the Tailwind goes up, Chan Pao should be able to outspeed it. But at the same time, Overquill not really threatened super heavily. It's taking neutral damage from anything that's on the field here. Just going to go for the Protect then. Keep itself safe. Sort of fish for what Z could be going for in this first turn. And it's going to be a Protect from this Chan Pao as well, as it's just a Tailwind. So entering into the next turn, Z is going to have that speed advantage right away since we don't actually see this Tornadus on the field. Even better, you get this Water Spout into this Talon Flame, which is super effective. You just get the knockout, and Z gets to bring something else in for free. That is, I mean, that's something we highlight every time. If a Tailwind goes up on the same turn the Tailwind Setter goes down, that can be a really big deal because you get that free swap into something. You're guaranteeing that it doesn't take damage on the switch, and Maridon comes straight in. Will very heavily threaten this Kyogre, which is a Ghost type Terra. It cannot resist those strong electric type attacks. It can only make them neutral. But I think if you're facing down a Choice Specs Coridon, Maridon, not Coridon, there's nothing like neutral is not a resist anymore. Like no. you're just still gonna get knocked out. <laughs> but that's why this switch makes so much sense here because mm -hmm. Henry wants to be able to shut off this electric train right away yep. because it gets rid of the Hadron Engine. You're getting rid of the boost that that ability gives to this Maridon. Uh, to its special attack on electric terrain. So those attacks are going to hurt just a little bit less. But does Z call that switch? Kind of expecting yes. this to come through. <laughs> that Icicle Crash definitely heading in that wow. Boom's direction. And now the war for this terrain control can always go back into Z's favor if they want to switch off this Maridon. It can go back into Z's favor, but the issue is you would have to swap the Maridon out. When the uh, when the Kyogre is on the field and like no, nothing really wants to swap into a big water spot or origin pulse from this Kyogre, you still have Tailwind up. So obviously the speed is still in your favor, especially with this Overquill hitting the field once again. Swift Swim will be negated by the fact that Z has a Tailwind boost. So the Overquill will be acting after Chan Pao and Maridon, but I'm not sure if that's enough. You still have to worry about that Maridon. You do, because uh, you can still hurt. I mean, Hadron Engine as a multiplier might not necessarily be online, but Electro Drift is still a move that's available to it, and we're not going to have too many things that are going to be able to resist that. But it makes a lot of sense if this Kyogre is under the threat of some of those super effective Electro type attacks, just bring the Slanderous in. The only problem is that that could be telegraphed and Z could just make another call that a switcher will be made. If you try to target that Kyogre with an Electric type move and an Ice move, that could be very dangerous for this Landorus. You might have to trade the Maridon, though. This Overquill will be matching the terrestrialization of this Maridon, which will become a pure electric type and further boost those electric type attacks. And maybe if you if you go for Volt Switch into Landorus, I wonder if the Gunk Shot here is able to just one hit KO this Maridon. Maybe. It's got the Poison Terror type now, yeah. so it's going to be doing way more than what it would normally. 
But it's the Icicle Crash first, calling it again. Oh. That is just going to be a one-hit knockout and another knockout that this Chen Pao is going to be able to take as the Bolt Switch now going to be landing into this Overquill instead. What a great coverage oh, option. No. And it's just a one-hit knockout too. <laughs> this poor Overquill. That's, I think that's two things. You just want to kill with Icicle Crash from the swap this game. That's a, such a smart play too because if... Like in that case, you probably double target the Kyogre slot with that Icicle Crash. If the Kyogre stays in and doesn't get a double protect, then it gets knocked out by the Volt Switch after the Icicle Crash. But if the Lander switches, Z knows that the, Ice, that the Chen Pao on their team is faster than the Maridon, so that Icicle Crash goes first, KOs the Landorus, and then the Volt Switch goes straight into that Overquill. And with the Electric Terra, even without the Hadron Engine boost or the Terrain boost, is still enough for a one-hit KO. Yeah, I mean, that's just wild. And you're still playing it out though, of course, goes for the Protect to at least bypass the fake out if that were gonna come through, but it was gonna be a Sucker Punch actually. Knowing the calculations here, you don't even need the speed control, but you're kind of hoping that Kyogre's gonna be able to do enough on this next turn after this Tailwind has expired. Kyogre should be faster than this Iron Hands, but not necessarily the Chan Pao, especially when Sucker Punch is gonna be that priority attack. You're gonna be chunking it a lot, so this Water Spout, just not at full power. It, it can't <laughs> even knock out the Chen Pao because it has the Focus Sash intact as well. And Iron Hands, we saw how much damage that close yep. combat did. And so with that final knockout, Z takes the game, takes the series 2-0. Unfortunately for Overquill, it didn't get to do a whole lot, but I'm very glad we got to see it yeah. participate at least. It did its best, you know, 